Hey guys, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to start the questing system for our simple RPG. The system is going to be pretty simple, but it's also going to be pretty cool. We're going to be able to have multiple quests assigned to our player, and each quest can have multiple different types of goals, whether they are kill goals or collection goals or any other kind of goal that your game can track in game via an event of some sort. So if you have, say we have the combat system where whenever an enemy dies, we fire an event, well, we can use that in our goals for our quest. Whenever we pick up an item, we fire an event. Well, we can use that item event in our goals for the quest. Pretty cool, right? So we're also going to have an item, or sorry, a quest giver that's going to be able to assign the player a quest that we then track and are able to complete. And then once we complete the quest, we go back to the giver and they'll give us the reward for doing the quest. Pretty cool. In this episode, we're going to start with the goals, defining what a goal is, and then we'll also be able to, in the next episode, define specific types of goals using the base goal class. So what I have here in my scripts folder is a questing folder. And I'm just going to keep all my stuff in here for the quest-related scripts and all that stuff. So I'm going to create a new uh, folder inside here, actually, for specific quests. So we're going to have our base classes and stuff out here, like our, our goals and our actual base class uh, for the quest, base class. <laughs> and uh, then we're going to have our actual like custom quests that inherit from that base quest be within the quest folder to keep it a bit more organized for us. So inside my questing folder, I'm gonna create a C-sharp script and I wanna call it goal. And this is gonna be the base class for all of our goals. And in our case, we're gonna have at least one goal, we may have two. We may have a kill goal and also a collection goal or a collect goal for picking up items. But for now, we'll have just a kill goal. So we're gonna start with the base class though. And I'm gonna get rid of the mono behavior inheritance because we're not gonna be creating a component from this. We're not gonna be using anything that comes from the mono behavior class. And I wanna get rid of the mono behavior methods. Don't need those. So I want to start by defining what a quest goal is. So the quest goal is going to have a description. It's going to have a boolean that's going to decide if the quest goal was completed. So just a completed bool property. And then we're going to be able to track how many of something we've done and compare that to how many we need to do. So let's say we have a goal that says kill five slimes. And we haven't killed any slimes. So the required amount would be five. The current amount would be zero, and then we kill a slime. The current amount is now one, the required amount is still five. But we're going to compare the current amount every time that it increases with the required amount. And if we actually get a match or we go above and beyond what we need, then that goal is completed. And once the goal is completed, the quest isn't necessarily completed because the quest, as I said, could have multiple goals on it. So I want to check every goal every time you complete one goal to see if the quest was completed. Now, in my mind, a quest may have two or three goals, right? You may have the, the quest that we're going to create is I'm going to call uh, Ultimate Slayer. And it's going to allow us to track if we have killed five slimes, if we have killed two vampires, maybe if we create another, another type of enemy or kill five uh, goats, I don't know, whatever you want to kill. And it's going to be able to track all three of those, right? And you have to complete all three of those to complete the quest, that kind of thing. I'm not thinking that we're going to have hundreds of goals per quest here, but I don't know what kind of game you're making, so maybe you do. So I'm going to get right into this. I know I've talked for long enough. I'm going to make a property. It's going to be a string property, and I'm going to call it description. And this is just going to describe what the goal is. And it's going to be saying, like, uh, kill five slimes. Right? That would be the description of that goal. Then I want a property that's going to be a bool, so true or false, and call it completed. So if the goal is completed, this is true. If not, this is false. Pretty simple. Another property here. And I want to make this one an integer. And this is going to be the current amount that we talked about. So how many of this goal that we've currently, uh, that we've currently done? And then another property here for integer. And it's going to be the required amount. Oop, that's actually, not, it's going to be an integer, first of all, and it's going to be the required amount, required amount. There we go. And also, our goals are going to have a couple of methods, right? They're going to have an evaluate method that determines if the quest or the goal should be completed, and then it's going to have a complete method, 
and it's also going to have an initialization method that's going to handle well initializing the goal in our list because think about what goal is it's not necessarily a component that gets enabled like any other component would in our game so we can't use start or awake or any of that stuff or on enable because it's not working that way right it's something that's attached it's going to be actually in a list in a generic list to a quest so we need to know whenever this goal is added so that we can start tracking it and when we do that we'll actually create a new goal using the new keyword which as you know you can't do them on a behavior you have to use add component it just depends on how you want to approach this you could take a component only based approach and just use components but i like to mix it up with standard oop and uh, like an entity component based approach as well so we're going to do that with this first of all will the evaluate methods have to be overridden probably not it's always going to evaluate current amount versus required amount no matter what kind of goal it is even if you have a single action goal right zero is the same zero compared to one as zero is compared to five and that would be fine for us so we're just going to have for now it's going to be a public um void and it's going to be called evaluate and all this is going to do is take the current amount and see if it is greater than or equal to the required amount Okay, so we'll get to that here in a second. I then want to have another public void here that's going to be the complete method. And we're going to call complete if the evaluate is true, right? So I want to say if, simple check here, if current amount is greater than or equal to the required amount. So if we have enough or more, we then want to call complete. Pretty cool, right? And all complete is going to do for now is actually set completed to be equal to true. Uh, in the future, it would also go through all the other goals associated with that quest, or not, it, it won't go through it itself, but it will call something that will handle going through the rest of the goals associated with that quest to see if it should be completed, the quest as a whole. And we'll also want that initialization method here. I want to make a public. Uh, this is going to be overridden. I'm most likely going to do that, I'm pretty sure. So we're going to make an actual virtual method here, a virtual void, return nothing, call init. And this may have a base functionality in the base class, in the parent class of goal. It may, but for now, we're going to just say uh, like default in it stuff, whatever might be there. And we'll actually call the base class from our uh, kill goal or a collect goal, whatever class derives goal. And then we'll use that, um, tack on some more stuff if we need it. We'll find out what we're doing with that as we go along. So now I have a way to initialize this goal once we make a kill goal and then make a collection of that kill goal on the quest. We're, we're looking ahead here, right? We have a bunch of stuff to do, so we're looking ahead here. And we have an evaluate method that's going to handle determining if we should complete the method or complete the goal. And uh, also the complete method itself, which in the future will be a bit more than it is. But that should be all we need for now for our goal. And uh, we'll use this in the next episode to actually write out the kill goal, which will just inherit all this stuff and add a couple other things to it. And then we'll use that once we construct the quest object. It's gonna be pretty cool. Hope you guys are excited about this. I know you've been waiting for it for a while. I've been waiting for it for a while. I've been wanting to do it for a while. I've just been extremely, extremely busy, but luckily, or I guess luckily, I don't know. I The job I'm working is gonna be a bit uh, a bit slow for a while so I'm not having any contract work to do for at least a couple of months it looks like until some more projects come around for it so until then I am expecting and I'm excited about this and I don't want to get any um, any hopes up that I if I can't actually deliver but I'm, I'm excited and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to dedicate for a while my full time to this and that means a lot of stuff right i'm going to finish the rpg um, i am more than ready to get it out of the way and i have some exciting stuff i want to do with the unity tip series where i can talk more about more about uh smaller things that, that will help you in your unity endeavors and i think everybody really likes that format for that so it's a bit more edited you know it takes a bit longer to make but people seem to really like that so i want to do that and also want to get back into like just just programming, right? So I want to talk a bit more about more intermediate scripting and more intermediate 
programming towards the advanced side, maybe a bit more about C sharp. And we're going to also apply that to Unity, but we're going to teach it in a way that's useful outside of Unity as well. So I want to do that in its own series where we, it's like an introduction to intermediate scripting in C sharp uh, or with C sharp in Unity. And I think this is going to be pretty cool. And it's not going to be like we're making a game. You know, we're not going to make a big game. We're just going to talk about different concepts, different principles, different pillars of, of, of the language and of, of the program itself and that kind of thing and how you can approach different things and, and get things done. And I think that'll be pretty cool. So let me know what you think about that in the comments along with the Unity Tips series. And I don't currently have any plans in mind for a, uh, a, another course on an entire game like this one was. But I do have some stuff in mind for a couple other things that I'll talk about soon, hopefully. So, have any questions, go to forum.gogamegrind.com or ask in the comments below. And I'm sure your fellow viewers that know the answer would like to help you. I would like to think so, at least. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Austin, and I'll see you next lesson. Blah, blah.